What's up guys? So we are getting to the point where fall transition is going to start to become a thing. And you know, fall is one of those great times of the year that you can almost catch them on anything you want to catch them. And it can get confusing because the fish are moving, a lot of different possibilities that you can do. So today we're going to try to simplify it. We're going to break down our five favorite baits for the month of October. Give you guys a starting point, let you have a little bit of insight as to how we're approaching and why we're using these specific baits. So if you're ready, let's do it. Welcome to the Hookup Tackle. The Hookup Tackle is the world's largest showcase of Mega Bass products, featuring baits and colors not found at any other dealer. The Hookup also offers a wide display of OSP, Evergreen, Depths, Lucky Craft, Jackal, and many more. The Hookup Tackle is owned and operated by family, is staffed by guides and verified tackle nerds who love helping anglers elevate their craft. If you're in the Phoenix area, we'd love to have you stop by our showroom and check out the wonderful world of Mega Bass and the Hookup for yourself. If you shop online, there are almost 10,000 SKUs of Mega Bass products alone with hundreds of other companies and new products being added daily. So next time you're looking for that hard to find bait, that color your fish have never seen before, or maybe you just want to elevate your game, look at thehookuptackle.com. All right, welcome back, my friends. I am Ben with The Hookup Tackle, AKA The Tackle Otaku, being joined by my buddy, Jeffrey the King. What's up, Jeffrey the King? What's up? So today we are gonna dive into- We are The Hookup Tackle. Yeah, we're The Hookup Tackle. Everybody knows that, they're on the okay, channel. Okay, just making sure that they yeah. know. We're The Hookup Tackle. Thank Better? you. Better? Mm -hmm. Nailed it. Thanks, director. It's been a while. Yeah. All right, so today we are gonna jump in and talk about some of our favorite baits for this time of the year. Literally in the fall, you can catch them on so many different things, right? So many possibilities out there because the fish are beginning to do what is referred to as transition. They are going to be a little bit more nomadic. They are going to roam. They are gonna be in 20 feet one day and two feet the next day. So it's just a time of the year where they're either following bait back into creek arms, they're moving up and down. They're just kind of all over the place and it can be a challenge to stay on top of them, but it's one of the most rewarding times of the year. We get some of the biggest fish of the year. They're fattening up before winter comes. And so we're just gonna break down our five favorite baits. These are baits that are gonna be on our rods pretty much every time we go fishing this month. So, you ready, Jeff? Oh yeah. Okay. I gotta see what you got. Well, you know where I'm gonna start. Yeah. This is pretty much, maybe this should just be <laughs> Ben's number one bait for 12 months of the year. <laughs> Okay, so this time of the year, it is really hard to get away from a buzz bait. So, you know, a buzz bait is just one of those things that draws big bites. It's, it's definitely a confidence thing for me to get a big bite. It's a great bait when the fish are moving shallow and they're really keyed in on bluegill, on shad. It's also an amazing bait when lakes are dropping. So what happens a lot of times this time of the year is you'll get some water that starts to drop down at the same time bait is migrating back right so you get this kind of double prong approach that really pushes fish into super shallow water and a buzz bait's just a great way to get them when they're in that you know just inches of water you can tune it to where it's not overly loud you can put it up on the bank and drag it in and really present it in a very natural way without having to throw it and have that loud kind of splash uh, that you would need to do with a treble hook bait. So very simply, I pretty much have a couple different buzz baits in my arsenal. The Mega Bass Jamaica Bow, I talk about it a lot, is pretty much the staple. It's usually my starting point. What's great about the Jamaica Boa is you can have it clack if you need it to be a little bit louder. You can just flex the arm to make it a little quieter. I usually stay in the shad or white type patterns because out here where we are, shad is predominantly the bait of choice. But if you guys are, you know, up north or in the Midwest and they're eating more bluegills, that kind of stuff, then go with a green pumpkin or a black or a darker profile and you should be good. The Depths Matsu Buzz is also a great one. Depths has been really pushing this hard on social media, so I'm sure you guys have been seeing it. What's dope about the Matsu Buzz is you can fish it just how it is right out of the package and not add any of the additional weight that they have inside. And it's basically going to perform just like a traditional buzz bait. It's quiet, it's got a rear weighted kind of build to it. So the weight kind of extends all the way across the body. So a similar 
idea, similar concept as the Jamaica Boa to where it's a half ounce, but it's more towards the rear, so it casts really well. But what's neat about these baits is again, same idea as Jamaica Boa. If you leave it as the package, this blade will hit that wire and create a clack. If you don't want the clack, you just kind of pull it out just a little bit and flex it, and then you have a quieter approach, right? So you can have kind of a two-in-one look with these buzz baits. They also come with these little weighted dots on here. And if you use these little weighted dots, these are basically just like a suspend dot type deal, right? A little sticker. You can stick them on the blades and it will create a little bit more of a violent vibration. It will actually cause it to drift left or right depending on where you place it and which one you purchase. So if you wanted to make sure it was always kind of running to the right, say you'd like to fish off the right side of your boat and you want it to really you know, stay next to the bank, you could weight it appropriately for that. Or you could do the opposite and have it always kind of going away from you. So just some neat things that you can do with it. 99% of the time, I just take it out of the package and throw it. I don't mess with the weights. So I just like it to go straight and track true. And I find it's just a really good buzz bait, good hookup ratio, nice natural look. So there you go. There is number one starting point for me in October. This is generally the last kind of hurrah for a buzz bait for us. Sometimes we get lucky and it'll stay warm and we can throw it into November. But October is usually the last chance for us before it starts getting a little too cold for them to aggressively chase it. So give it a chance. I know you guys are gonna catch them on it. All right, second bait for me, and this is usually my next in line bait, is going to be a walking top water bait. Now you hear us talk a lot about like the Tekel kick knocker, right? That's one that we throw pretty much all summer. And we love the kick knocker because it has a really loud sound. It's great when the fish are in open water. It's great when they're suspended. But this time of the year, they start to transition a little bit shallower. And the kick knocker is certainly still a great option when they are more offshore. But as they start getting a little closer to shore, I find that the gunfish is really the key walking bait for this time of the year. So the reason why we transition over to a gunfish is it still has sound, right? So you're still gonna get a little bit of that knocking sound for the fish to see it. But as it moves through the water, it's more of a, almost like a wake bait versus real high on the surface. It doesn't have that really loud, intimidating clack and knock and rattle. It has more of a natural, just enough sound as it moves and just enough pop to where it can draw the fish in but not spook them if they're really shallow. Now the other great thing about the gunfish is you could be fishing it in real skinny water and then they can blow up behind you in open water and you can turn around and fire out and it still has enough presence to where they'll be able to find it in open water. So it's just a super versatile walking topwater bait and one that's been a staple out here on the West Coast, especially in some of our bigger waters like Havasu and Mead and Powell, Pleasant, right? They absolutely smoke the gunfish. So the gunfish comes in two sizes. It comes in a 115 and a 95 size. So the 115 is generally my starting point. I like the 115 just because it's a little bit heavier. It's about three fifths of an ounce. It's four and a half inches long. So it just casts a little bit farther. I can make longer casts. The 95 is critical though when they get picky uh, or if you get a day where it's just really glass calm. So if it's really slick or they're picky on bait size, the 95 can really come into play. I typically will throw the 95 on a spinning rod. So you don't have to, you can throw it on a casting. But for me, this just throws so well on a spinning that I can still get that distance. And then I save the 115 for my bait casting. As far as colors go, I keep it pretty simple. Generally a white color and then a clear color. So if it's really bright and sunny or they're eating smaller bait fish, I love the more transparent colors. We actually had Lucky Craft make a special custom batch of bone specifically for this time of the year because anything in that bone white is just a great option. So again, keep it simple. But again, if you guys are you know fishing around perch or bluegill, then just add one of the bluegill type patterns in and you will have success with it. So there you go, the gunfish number two for us in October. All right, third bait for October. Now, I couldn't narrow this down to just one bait, Jeff, of course. Of course not. Right? But the third thing that I usually go for this time of the year is a jerk bait. Now, depending on where I'm fishing and what level the fish are at, that could be a soft plastic jerk bait 
or that could be a hard jerk bait. This is the time of the year where they smoke both. So either a fluke style bait or a hard jerk bait. So let's start with the hard jerk bait. Now, for me, in October, I think of October as kind of like the true beginning of fall where things are starting to happen, the fish are feeding up, they're still really aggressive. And because they're moving a lot, I wanna be able to fish pretty quick. I wanna fish aggressively, I wanna fish fast, I wanna cover as much water as I can to make sure that I'm finding either the schools of fish or the wolf packs of fish. So what'll happen a lot is they'll be schooled up in the summer and then as they start to move up and down, instead of them being in really large schools, they'll break into wolf packs of three to five to 10 fish, right? And so I'm looking for these wolf packs because once you find them, you can generally catch two or three out of the wolf pack and then you gotta go find another little wolf pack, right? So for me, a jerk bait that I can fish quick is important here. So there's two that I use a lot. So the first one is the Edo Shiner. And the second one is the Lucky Craft Pointer 100. So I choose these over a 110 solely for speed. I can fish them quicker, I can fish them more aggressive. We also get a lot of days that are a little bit windier this time of the year. So I'm not nervous about the wind, I'm not nervous about casting in the wind. Also, if it's really loud outside, both of these baits have sound, right? So they're both gonna call the fish to them. So, you know, either one of these, and I'll bounce back and forth just based on what I need. I find the Pointer 100 has more side to side movement to it, and I find the Shiner just has a different action, a little bit more head aggressive movement to it. So, uh, just to keep it really simple, again, with colors, usually some type of shad, like a matte shad or GP sexy shad, those are usually my starting points. And then, again, if I'm around bluegill or perch, I'll go to a GLX Galaxy Shiner or the GG Perch is fine as well. But I keep it super simple. I can almost take these three colors anywhere around the country and catch them this time of the year on the Shiner. And then on the Pointer 100, same thing, you know, striped shad, chartreuse shad, shell white, which is basically their matte white, Again, you can pretty much catch them uh, anywhere you go on these three colors. And again, I would just add in a bluegill or a perch if you guys are fishing around bluegill or perch. But even in places where, you know, say they're feeding on goby, say they're feeding on perch, you know, there are just certain colors like a chartreuse shad or a matte shad that they just smoke. I mean, Jeff and I just came back from New York and I was throwing matte shad and they were smoking it right? So it doesn't necessarily always have to completely match the hatch. Really, it just has to have an aggressive movement to it to get a fish to trigger, right? It has to look natural enough, attractive enough, and just get them to react before they have time to think about it, which is why I go to a more aggressive moving bait because I want less pause and more movement, right? So I want to kind of jerk, less pause, right? It's going to be a much faster move, a much faster retrieve, than normally with jerk baits. Now, let's say the water's cooling or the fish just aren't reacting to the fast movement. That's when I will switch over to a soft plastic jerk bait. So the soft plastic jerk bait of choice as of this last year has definitely been the Depths Sakamata Shad. Now you can throw you know, the Zoom Super Fluke, you could throw the OSP Dual Life Stick. There's all kinds of fluke style baits, but the Sakamata Shad has definitely been the hot one this year. And there's several reasons why. First off, it's available in, you know, all the colors and all the sizes you need, right? So six inch is generally my starting point for this. And this is if the fish are feeding on, you know, full size thread fin shad to small gizzard shad, or even like small bluegill. I find that the six inch just is the perfect all around size. If I need to get a little finesse here, I can drop down to five inch. If they're super picky and super finicky, you can even go to four inch. If you guys live in places where they're chasing bigger bait, like herring or gizzard shad, then you can even jump up to the seven inch or the eight inch size. Now. The reason I choose the Sakamata Shad, there's a couple things about Sakamata Shad that are different than a traditional fluke. If all you needed to do is just jerk and twitch and move and bounce and do whatever it needs to do, it doesn't really matter. The Zoom Super Fluke is fine. Save a few bucks, grab that bag and go with that, right? But the reason why I like the Sakamata is it's built in a way to where it will give you that erratic jerking action. But if you rig it correctly on the pause, it will flutter horizontally like a Senko instead of just kind of spiraling down, you know, and not looking like anything. And I like that horizontal fall. 
So with the Sakamata Shad, obviously it has the traditional fluke style body, but you'll notice that it has these couple of stabilizer fins to it on the front. And the way it's built, and it's built kind of, you know, weighted or a little heavier in the middle with those stabilizer fins. If you rig it correctly, this is nine times out of 10, the hook that I use, just an owner offset worm wide gap. This is the hook that I've used for ages and ages for flukes, senkos, anything like that. A, because it's the right bend without being too much bend, so it lets the bait do the work that it's designed to do. A lot of times if I go to an EWG style hook, the hook, it'll just be so much hook coming out the bottom that the hook almost alters the action of the bait, if that makes sense. The other reason I like this is it's a triple X rated hook. So it's kind of like a super line style hook. It's a little heavier gauge. So it's just gonna help weight it down and give me a little bit more weight without having to add, you know, nail weights or a weighted hook or something like that. So when this is rigged, you should have basically something like this, okay? And I try to put the whole front side into the bait, so all the way to the tag end will fit in there. And you can see that as this thing twitches, as you dart, it's just gonna have that natural movement. But if you rig it this way, when you kill it, it's going to have that kind of shimmy, that fall, so you can really pinpoint and pick areas apart. Let's say the fish have moved shallow, right? And you know that they're on this 30 or 40 yard stretch and there's some bushes or some weed lines and you really just want to slow down and pick it apart. You know, throwing a hard jerk bait sometimes can be too aggressive where you could go with the Sakamata Shad and you can give it the twitch, get the action, and then just kill it right next to the key rock, next to the key bush, next to the key you know, ditch or whatever there is, and just let it have that nice little subtle fall and they absolutely crush it. Of course, you can fish these things in open water too. I mean, there's a million YouTube videos out there talking about you know double rigging and nose rigging and all kinds of different ways you can do it. But for me, this time of the year, you know, if I'm throwing a fluke like this, it's because I wanna put it into places where I don't want two or three exposed treble hooks to be snagging bushes, snagging grass. I wanna put this in the skinnier water. I wanna slow it down a little bit and pick things apart. So there you go. The Depths Sakamata Shad for your soft jerk bait. All right, number four, right? This is your language, Jeff. Oh yeah, a Talk swim to me. bait. Big swim bait, right? Like nine, 10 inch giant like glide bait maybe a big softy like a 10 inch mag draft no huh no i oh. want to catch fish in october you throw whatever you want I'm, and not catch anything I'm but i'm oh. catching oh, fish in october that kind of yeah swim real bait. I, swim bait oh i get it yeah all right so here's the scoop much like the jerk bait, the top water you know that aggressive mindset of just covering a lot of water I don't know of a better bait to cover a shit ton of water fast than a Reaction Innovation Skinny Dipper. It is definitely one of the best baits for just chucking and winding as quickly as you can, moving as much as you can, and finding these areas where the fish are migrating to, where they're stacked, and then once you kind of find them, then you can pick them apart with some other items. But the best way to cover a lot of ground is with a bait like this. Now, again, I keep the colors super simple, right? Basically a white and then like a natural shad color. And again, if you're fishing, you know, bluegill, perch, that kind of stuff, go with a green pumpkin or a bluegill type profile, really simple. Now, I think most of you probably already have the Skinny Dipper in your arsenal. Skinny Dipper is designed to fish fast. You can see it's a very hard plastic, right? It's not very limp. And so it's designed to just burn, designed to have a lot of speed. This is not a bait that you're gonna wanna really slow down and crawl. So the way I rig this is very simple. I'm throwing the full size Skinny Dipper probably 90% of the time, Little Dipper when it gets tough. So we're gonna talk about the Skinny Dipper because this time of the year they should be eating full size bait. I throw a five aught owner twist lock hook on there. Now you can do a weighted version, you can do an unweighted version. For me, the majority of the time, I just go straight five aught unweighted. Now, the reason you would add a weight or a heavier weight is just to move it faster. So the more weight that's on there, the quicker you can get that bait to go, okay? So 
you got the five aught on here, right? And let me show you a little rigging tip here. And this is super, super important if you guys are just getting into skinny dippers, okay? So you're gonna twist this guy on, right? You're gonna get it on and then it's ready to go. Now, here is the little tip or trick. You have to, well, you don't have to, you can do whatever you wanna do. <laughs> but if you want to catch a lot of fish, it is imperative that you add a red treble stinger, okay? Now, I don't know why. I'm not a huge believer in red trebles or like changing colors. Like I don't do this on anything else, but We've thrown this for long enough in a bunch of different ways to know that there's something about this that helps. If you throw it like this with no treble hook on the back, you are going to get a lot of bumps. You're gonna get a lot of fish that are just gonna bump it, they're gonna push it, and you're gonna miss them. There's something about adding this treble hook to it that causes them to eat the whole thing, okay? And I don't know if it's the flash, I can't imagine it is. I think it's something in the vibration and how it helps keel the bait as it's moving really quickly. So, all you're gonna do on this, you can use a size six or a size four. Either size works, so you can play, you can play with either. And again, you could use owner, you could use Gamagatsu, it's not that big of a deal. But all you're gonna do on this is you're literally just gonna slide that treble hook over that hook. Okay, that's literally it. Okay, so then you're going to rig this. It's going to come out the top. And then this hook, I generally just kind of stick right there just to kind of keep it in place. But that's not even that big of a deal either. If you want to just leave it down there, that's totally fine. I generally just kind of put it in there just so the tail doesn't wrap on the cast. And that's it. And there's something about having that little extra drag underneath the bait that just helps it kind of stay and build this little bit of a pocket underneath the surface of the water so that you can burn this super fast. You don't want this bait, if this is the surface of the water, you want this bait literally right here, just subsurface. You don't want it to actually ever like break the surface because it's not as effective that way. You want it to get just to the surface and then you'll find it'll trap this little pocket of air and you can fish it as quickly as you can. When they bite this thing, because you're gonna be moving it so fast, I recommend just being at a slight angle. So if I'm casting here towards Jeff, I'm gonna be turned out just a touch to the side so that when they bite it, right, there's a little bit of give and all I'm gonna do is turn. Because you're moving it so quick and they're hitting it so aggressively, you don't need to have a big hook set. In fact, if you do a big hook set, you're gonna screw it all up, right? You're gonna to jerk too soon, it's gonna pop out of its mouth and it's done. But I find that when you're like this and they bite it and you turn, if you miss, if you just keep winding, nine times out of 10, they will come back and get it again because all you've done is look like a shad trying to get away. So that's it. Super simple. One of my favorite baits for the fall, the Reaction Innovation Skinny Dipper. Now, as always, I couldn't just decide on one swim bait, even though this is supposed to be top five baits. But the other swim bait that I throw a ton this time of the year is the OSP Doe Live Shad. So for me, the Doe Live Shad and the Skinny Dipper, this is kind of like a one, two prong approach. This is my bait for really covering water quickly. This is my bait for picking it apart. Okay, so after I've found the area that all the wolf packs are hunting or the bass are staging in with the dipper, I will then go back through with the Doe Live Shad and really pick it apart. And the reason why I like the Doe Live Shad this time of the year is it's kind of an in-between. I can fish it quickly, I can fish it slowly. I can do a lot of different things with it. You know, if I throw something like a spark shad, I find I have to fish it too slow. If I throw something like a K-Tech, I find I have to fish it too fast. Where the Dole Live Shad just gives me a lot of versatility. It's also a great one that you could rig a lot of different ways. So depending on the depth, you know, I might put it on a swim jig and pitch it around the bushes. You can put it on just a straight swim bait head. It's a great one to go on an underspin as well and fish it in a little bit deeper water off some rocks. But Generally speaking, I'm sticking with a four inch or a four and a half inch size. Colors, again, I usually do some kind of white, some kind of shad, keep it really simple. It's just a great approach to slow down after you found them with the skinny dipper. Where's the mother chaser? It's in my garage. I know that's your favorite in October. 
Hell year, yeah. year round. It's basically the only bait you need. <laughs> yeah. You need four of them. All right, and finally for me, the fifth bait that I always have tied on this time of the year is a big square bill. Now, square bills are effective anytime the fish are shallow. I love catching fish on a crankbait. I, in my mind, a crankbait and a jig, eh, probably the best two ways to catch a giant. Sorry, Jeff. I think there's more big ones on crankbaits than big swim baits. Well, yeah. That's an obvious fact. Yeah. There's more because, big ones on a drop shot. Because they're better. <laughs> yeah. So when I say big, I mean a substantial size, right? We're talking about, you know, one ounce, two ounce, you know, larger size square bill items. And the reason why I go to a square bill versus a deep diver, now, this is just generally speaking, right? There may be specific lakes where the fish are just stacked still in 20 to 30 feet and you want to throw a deep diving crankbait a flutter spoon you know more traditional like late summer structure type stuff but generally speaking in october the fish are starting to transition so they're starting to move out of the deep water and towards the shallow water and they may be anywhere from a foot out to 12 13 15 feet at any given moment right so by throwing a bigger square bill i can effectively cover all of that territory and I can get it to deflect off cover the same way I would a smaller, shallower square bill. So for me, you know, the bait that I usually start with this time of the year is the Evoke 4.0. Let me take it out of the package here. I was gonna say you. that plastic looks dope. Yeah, keep the, the plastic on for a unique <laughs> look, Jeff. For a different swim. Yeah. <laughs> you know, everybody throws it without the plastic. Custom tips. That's lame. <laughs> All right, so there we go, the Evoke 4.0 from depths. Now this is a big bait. It's an intimidating size bait when you first look at it. I mean, it's the same size as your hand, but remember this time of the year, these fish, they're, they're feeding up, right? They know winter will be coming at some point. It's gonna be harder to find food and the food that they're eating is generally more full size. You're seeing full size threadfin, you're seeing gizzard shad, you're seeing bluegill, you're seeing all that, you know, main forage. This is a great one because I can fish this slow if I want, and I can really creep and crawl it up over cover. But more importantly is you can burn the shit out of this thing. You can fish this thing as fast as you want to fish it, which is basically the same idea that we're doing with a bait like a skinny dipper, and we're covering a ton of water and we're trying to draw a reaction strike out of them. So just get this thing out there, make a good cast, and just start burning now. Word of caution, this thing vibrates like a crazy hard chatterbait. Like you will feel this thing moving and it will wear you out. But if you're willing to put in some work, it's an incredibly effective tool this time of the year. So that's the Evoke 4.0. Now, if you guys are fishing more weeded areas or you know shallower grassy stuff, then the Evoke 4.0 is probably gonna dive a little too deep. It's gonna get too far into the weeds. It's gonna drive you nuts. Right, so this is gonna be more of like wood, rock type mix. If you are in grass, Lucky Craft makes the Fat CB BDS 6. Now, the Fat CB BDS has been a staple out here on the West Coast for ages. It's one that we throw all the time on Clear Lake, California Delta, you know, places where they get a lot of grass. The BDS has got more of a rounded lip, so it really comes through grass, really comes through aquatic vegetation really, really well, better than most other square bill type baits. This still gives you that nice big profile, but it won't dive quite so deep. It'll let you kind of tick the grass or get in the grass, give it a good rip, and it'll pull out and come free, and you can draw those reaction strikes. So for grass, this guy, for deeper rock and wood, this guy, and then, you know, sometimes you'll have fish that are feeding on, you know, big full-size bluegill, big full-size perch, you know, and you just need a big profile that doesn't get down very deep. And that's where the Mega Bass Big M 2.0 comes in. So you can get this same, you know, big profile, but you're gonna stay in that four, five foot range, right? So instead of like the Evoke 4.0 that's gonna get down into 10, 12 feet, this one will stay much higher. It's very easy to throw. It doesn't crank very much. It just has a lot of flashing motion to it. So it's really easy to throw. So this is one that I'll just kind of run the bank with. If I have small little lanes, I just need a big profile that stays really high. 
this could be a great tool. So, you know, just mixing and matching the water with a big square bill is a great way to just get a monster bite this time of the year. So give it a go. All right, guys, that is a wrap. Those are my top five-ish baits for October. Dude, I do my best, Jeff. To I know you do. Five. You but, always try. You know, the more I talk, the more excited I get about <laughs> trying these different things. So, you know, if you guys are looking for a starting point, if you are finding it to be a little bit more difficult as we're going into this transition and locating fish, if you put any of these baits on, this would be a great starting point to just cover water, uh, no matter what type of fishery you're in, whether it's a pond, a big lake, if you're up in the Northeast, if you're down here in the Southwest, anywhere you go, these baits will be effective this time of the year. So if you have any questions, let me know, drop it down below and I will get to them. Jeff will leave links to the products if you wanna check any of them out closer. And until next time, guys, thank you for the support. Thank you for the business. Peace.